Okay, you're loud and clear. We're 45 seconds and counting. Okay, hello. Okay, just on time. Have a nice cool setup. 30 seconds to go. See you soon, one of them said. Fifteen. Okay, the abort stage is set. Gas and engine is armed. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero. This will be on ignition. What a lift off. And lift off. Roger ignition. Move. Ten over. Switch over. Ten seconds. The guidance. Roger. The onboard guidance has now taken over hey, control. Good. We confirm auto ignition. That's a primitive auto ignition. And they're now tilting over at an angle, speeding up very quickly now. Good. Here we go to cross catch ball. Watch the ball. Looks good, Houston. Roger, you're looking good from down here, Ali. Up on one minute. Oh. Two, one, mark one. Mark one. Don't look good, low, slow, but extra. Spider says we look good, all sources. 623. Three. At this point, in effect, they're on their backs, aren't they? They're, not, they're no longer vertical okay, relative to the moon. This is when they really need okay. confidence in that computer. And we did have that spurious abort signal during the landing phase, don't forget. Which... Trajectory looks good, we're at 12,000 feet. 3, 2, 1, mark 1, mark 1, mark 2. They've been rising now for two minutes, another five and a bit to go. H is right on, H is right on, take the action together. Okay, steering is good, things look good, Houston. It's quite a we lift. Copy the L and your go from down here going up at the rate of a mile a minute on average. Velocity 1100, altitude 1600, 16,000. At 700 miles an hour. And from that standing start, they've got to get up to 40,000 miles an hour to go into orbit. Roger, Of course, the interesting thing is they can't Coming see what the they're aiming at. Feet, the steerable antenna tracking very well. The steering is still good, Houston. Coming up on three minutes. Two, one, mark it. Mark. Three minutes. This star is good. This star is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. Mark it in oscillation. Oscillation in our RCS. Pressures, but I'm sure Talking about the uh, pre uh, fuel pressures in their reac reaction control yeah, system, yeah, the little motors on the side right. of the lunar module, which they don't really need at this stage. And your go from the ground at three and a half. Everything's nominal. Hey, Bruce, look good here. Nominal really means fine. I think in this context. Used to be called all systems go in the old days. It might be helpful just to say which direction they're going, taking off from the surface of the moon. Uh, as we look at it, they are in, in effect uh, making a right hand turn and uh, going around the back. Uh, 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 
Thanks for right together. The two guidance systems, that is the... Uh, Terry Houston, here, go from the ground, looking good. The primary onboard guidance system and the abort okay. guidance system both agreeing with each other, which is always comforting, both producing the same set of figures, which means that uh, there's no conflict. And Terry Houston, now we show all sorts of things, Zach and Miss Finn in good agreement. And Miss Finn is the uh, tr network of tracking uh, stations uh, on the Earth, which okay. also agrees with what the computer says. Talking about taking Damn. pictures. It's just five, five minutes from lift off now. Okay, we'll all be on five, we we'll go to five thirty. So in two minutes they should go into the lunar orbit insert. Altitude forty seven thousand feet now. They are, in fact, disappearing around the left edge of the moon's disk, nine miles up. I'm on 530 to market. 7 seconds to the 6 minute mark. Right, says we're looking real good. Hey, let's take one more at 6.30. All right. And it'll take them 7 minutes, 12 seconds, so just over a minute to go uh, until they're safely in orbit, rising all the time, right. gaining height and, and Harry, speed. This is Houston. Uh, uh, all is what you said. Okay. Right. Houston, this is As they lifted off, Kitty Hawk was almost directly overhead and will have been watching this and trying to take pictures of the ascent. They should be in lunar orbit in just 20 seconds from now. say residuals look good which means that they've got fuel in hand if they have to make further maneuvers they hope they won't they hope they're on the nail well this means that the first stage of getting home is clear now Colin the real trouble I think is going to be possibly on this docking because they did have trouble on the docking coming up Houston mission control are certainly scared of this one So they're in an orbit 51 miles by 9 miles, which is very similar to the one that they were in before touchdown. And it's very similar. It's almost exactly what they wanted to, to achieve as well, isn't it? Now the situation with this docking is that if the docking doesn't work, They've got a whole series of belt and braces on this, but they're pretty dicey. They've been told to have their lifelines ready in case they have to do a spacewalk between the two ships. Now, this would not be an easy thing to do. Uh, remember that they haven't got a line to pull onto the other ship. It's not like a normal spacewalk. They've got to get a line between the two and then pull themselves in. Well, now, this should take place, this docking, at just after half past nine. Uh, we'll be with you, of course, to tell you exactly what is going on at that time. 
Now we listen to uh, the astronauts talking to Houston. That tweak burn will touch up the orbit um, to get us in the desired 51 by 9. And that was the tweak I was mentioning earlier. So they're just a little bit below the orbit that they wanted. Tweak TIG, one four two, three six five one. Delta VX minus two point zero. So a lot of figures y, being compared now, four, which don't mean a great deal zero, down down on three, Earth to us listening to them. The question of the docking, I think, is um, is a problem, and Houston were a bit disappointed that when they took the probe and drogue out, and Shepard and Mitchell removed the offending probe and drogue and examined it, they could find no fault with it. And uh, it's pretty worrying to uh, precision engineers not to be able to find what made something go wrong, isn't it? This so, is always uh, the trouble. So, but they think it might have been a speck of ice on there, which of course would have melted as soon as they brought it into the cabin, and they're, they're hoping that was it. They're hoping everything will go quite smoothly this time during this docking. While you were talking, they were giving the figures for the tweak, and they're only a few feet per second out. Their coordinates were 2, 5, and 8 on X, Y, and Z, or Z as they put it. So this is quite a small blow in order to get them into the exact orbit they want to be in. Which you do first? Well, Al Shepard spoke about a great deal of relief in the command module, in the lunar module Antares after they'd landed on the moon. I dare say there's a good deal of relief in it again now. A relief at Houston and relief here in the BBC's Apollo studio. Arthur Garrett and I will be watching the progress of the rendezvous and docking during the evening. We'll keep you in touch. Meanwhile, meanwhile from the Apollo studio, that's all for now. Just to recap, the lunar module is expected to redock with the spacecraft around half past nine, and Colin Rioch, Arthur Garrett, and the Apollo 14 studio team will be bringing you news of this during Things Are Swinging. <laughs>